Ooh, it's one of those street side places. Looks cute and cozy. Welcome. Oh, Miss Kiminami. How do you do? Ah, oh, Miss Kami Sato. Perfect timing. Your booking was for... Well, right now. I believe so. We'll be sticking to the order I placed in advance. As for the other matter we discussed, thank you for your help. Excellent. No problem. And everything you asked for is ready and waiting. Traveler, tiny customer, please wait here for a moment while I prepare your food. Go ahead and take a seat. There is something I need to take care of, but I'll be back momentarily. <clears throat> it's nothing of that sort. I just have a few minor things I need to attend to. I won't be long. She sure left in a hurry. Whatever it is, it must be pretty urgent. So you two are Miss Kamisato's friends? <laughs> well, we serve all the classics. Sure, there are fancier looking places out there, but the food here speaks for itself. Hope you enjoy it. Over the years we've been in business, we've gotten to know the Kamisato clan quite well. Miss Kamisato and her brother are both fond of our food. They're always sending staff down here to order something and take it back to them. Her table booking surprised me. Not least because it was a group reservation. This is the first time I've ever heard of Miss Kamisato going out for dinner with friends. The first time ever? Oh, guess that makes us pretty important people, huh? Sure does. And I'm probably crossing the line here, but I'm just telling you what others have told me. Apparently, Miss Kamisato doesn't have a lot of friends. How is that possible? She's so kind and polite to everyone. Paimon would have thought that would make her really popular. That's what I used to think, too. But it turns out the rules of social interaction are a bit more complicated than that. Nobody in the neighborhood has a bad word to say about her. They all say she's beautiful, elegant, graceful. Not to mention that she belongs to one of the most illustrious clans in the land. In short, they see her as a model young lady. But that's just it. People look at her and they see a model of perfection. And they don't feel like that's something they can relate to. So the majority of kids from our ordinary families don't even try to talk to her. So you see, on paper, she sounds like a girl everyone would want to get to know. But in practice, she finds it difficult to make friends. Huh. Paimon never would have guessed. We don't speak all that much, but we do go quite a way back. I've always admired her for taking on so many responsibilities at such a young age. So it makes me really happy to see her here with friends today. Anyway, relax, enjoy your meal, and please talk to her as much as possible. I know she'll appreciate it. Consider it a favor for the whole neighborhood. Look after her for us. Ah! Huh? That sounded like Ayaka! <sighs> I'm so sorry, Traveler. Could you join me over there for a minute? Um, I need your help with something. I'm sorry. I didn't want to drag you away all of a sudden. I, um... Just had a cooking catastrophe. Oh, so that loud noise we heard came from the cooking pot. As you can see, this house is right next to the restaurant. It's where the owner lives. Actually, this whole compound is the family's private property. I asked Miss Kiminami to prepare some ingredients and utensils for me so that I could cook a special dish here. Right. If there's something you want to eat, you could just order it from the menu. Actually... I wanted to cook something as a gift for Tsubaki. My mother mentioned in her notebook that Tsubaki enjoys food from all over the world. So I thought, if I'm going to meet Tsubaki, perhaps a dish from overseas would make a fitting gift. A dish from overseas? So anything from outside Inazuma counts, right? If so, then we've got lots of options, don't we? That's what I was thinking. You must have picked up a lot of knowledge about different cultures on your travels. Hopefully, including regional cuisines. Can I leave you to finish this task, then? Just as a personal favor. Is that okay? I'll be indebted to you. Great. But... What kind of overseas dish would make a suitable gift? It needs to survive a journey from the kitchen to the recipient's doorstep. Oh, Paimon knows! There's one dish out there that was practically created for this purpose! Pizza! Pizza? It's an assortment of toppings and sauce 
spread over a bread base and cooked in the oven. And it's so good. That does sound pretty good. Is the pizza ready? Oh, it's ready. <laughs> it smells delicious. You're an excellent cook, Traveler. <sighs> I would love to be able to master dishes from all over the world. Well, all you need to learn is a recipe. We can bring you some more recipes in the future if you like. Great. I look forward to learning from your culinary expertise. How are you all doing? Whoa, is this... Miss Kamisato, this must be the dish you were talking about. Yes, an overseas dish cooked by the Traveler. Could I trouble you to package it for me? Sure, no problem. Oh, it smells good. I bet it tastes amazing. Oh, now I really want to put something like this on our menu. <laughs> want us to teach you how to make it? Oh, could you? The most satisfying meals are the ones you share with other people. So Paimon thinks that our friends in Monsta wouldn't mind us sharing this dish with Inazuma. Really? That's great. I've always wanted to learn how to cook some international dishes. If you can write down a recipe for me, I'll add it to our menu and put a promotion where everyone will see it. Since we've become a closed nation, people haven't had the chance to try anything new. Traveler, you're the best! I'll go pack up this dish for Miss Kamisato. Please, make your way back to the restaurant whenever you're ready. The food will be waiting for you. You could have sold that recipe for a high price, but you selflessly gave it away for free. You're a wonderful person. I mean it. I admire you a lot, and I'm so proud to be friends with someone of such fine character. Well, you should probably write down the recipe now, no? Yeah, let's make sure we include all the details and then give it to Miss Kiminami. So, pizza. Start with the basic ingredients. Correct, Mundo. Right, now to add the next couple of ingredients. Mmm, yep, that's right. Now for the cooking instructions. Place onto oven rack at high heat and cook until golden brown. All right, it's done. Long may our reputations and our recipes precede us wherever we go in Inazuma. I have no doubt that they will. This dish is exquisite. Cool! Then let's get this recipe to Miss Kiminami Prato. Hey! Have you written out the recipe? Here it is. Thank you! Chloe, this is so exciting. I want to make it right away. Traveler, Paimon, please accept my sincerest apologies for delaying your meal. <laughs> no problem! Food always tastes better when you've worked up an appetite! Alright, let's dig in before it gets cold. Well, what do you think? Is Inazuman cuisine to your liking? It's amazing! Paimon loved this one! Oh, and especially that one over there! <laughs> Good, I'm relieved. Um, when I was attempting to cook earlier on, did you chat with the owner at all? And did she, uh, say anything about me? She did, but don't worry. She's just happy for you as all. Well. She's happy for me? Oh, then she must have told you. Did she, um, what does it matter? I know just as well as anybody else that I've got no friends. Hey, it's not you. Most people just haven't had the chance to talk to you one on one before. Thank you for your comforting words, Paimon. It's all true, though. I just don't have very many friends. Most of the time I'm either accompanied by family or staff, so everyone must have found it quite a surprise to see me taking you out for a meal. Exactly! You've got at least two friends right here! Aww! Thank you! That makes me so happy! Ahem, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm forgetting myself. Hey now, expressing your feelings is the right thing to do. Keeping them locked away inside isn't gonna do you any good now, is it? I agree. So, I just want to say how happy I feel that you both see me as a true friend. Of course we do. That's always been our style. If someone's nice to us, we're nice to them too. 
friendship can go a long way. Take your mom, for example. She wrote about Tsubaki in her notebook, and now it's made you want to find them, too. Yes. I think friendship is an extremely precious thing, and ours is one that I will always treasure. Um, while we're on the topic, though, who is this Tsubaki person, anyway? Well, I think I have an idea, but it's just speculative at this point. I think that Tsubaki might be a fox envoy. A fox envoy? Yes, that's what I think. Even I, my mother's own daughter, had never even heard of this friend before. It just seems so mysterious. So I think it must be someone with transcendent abilities who doesn't show themselves very often. And fox envoys are nothing new. Stories have been told about them in Inazuma since ancient times. You must have met Kuji Yae before. Well, she's a fox envoy. That got me thinking. Maybe there are fox envoys out there in Inazuma that people just don't know about. And maybe Tsubaki is one of them. Wow! So Inazuma also has supernatural beings? Uh, when you say also... Well, before Inazuma, we spent some time in Liyue. They have lots of supernatural beings there, like the Adepti. All kinds of them, too. Up in the sky, down below the ground, in the water. Really? I've come across such things being asserted in books. But to hear someone talk about it from first-hand experience is extremely surprising. So Liyue lives up to its reputation. Its culture has a long history and gives rise to the most beautiful legends. Quite captivating. You should come visit Liyue with us sometime. The best part is, they have loads and loads of delicious delicacies. Really? I would love that. Speaking of delicacies, Traveler, Paimon, have you eaten your fill? Oh, Paimon has. Excellent. Then let's collect the kimono. Then we can pay a visit to my mother's mysterious and transcendent friend. <sighs> Your garment is ready, Miss Kamisato. I've folded and packaged it for you. Oh, and the other item we discussed? That's ready, too. Thank you very much. No, thank you. It is a beautiful piece of clothing, and it was a pleasure to work on. See you again next time. Traveler, I have a gift for you. Whoa. Looks super fancy! Is that for wearing in your hair? It's a hairpin in the style of a white heron. As well as a hair accessory, you can also use it as an ornament. I couldn't ask for your help and offer nothing at all in return. So this is my gift to you. I'm glad you like it. Speaking of white herons, that's what your title means, doesn't it? Shirasagi Himegimi. So this gift is like a little piece of yourself. It's just as elegant and beautiful as you are. <laughs> you flatter me, Paimon. If this gift reminds you of me, that is all I could ask for. <laughs> it definitely will. All right, well, now we've got what we came for, we can set off. Time to go meet Tsubaki. <laughs> So, a transcendent being lives here? Ooh. If someone lives here, then why is it so chilly? Hmm, I'm asking myself the same question. How strange. I'm quite sure that this is the location my mother wrote about, but surely... Hmm, I'm starting to have second thoughts. But since we're here, I still think we should go inside and explore in full. Yeah, makes sense. Who knows, maybe there's a surprise waiting in there for us. So, um, what does the notebook say exactly? Let me think. A crane brings one fresh flower in its beak to decorate my hair, 
while a white rabbit sews a hemline from four rays of moonlight, dressed appropriately, I face eastward and call out Tsubaki's name seven times. In the blink of an eye, I'm standing on the path that leads to her house. Sounds like a fairy tale. So your mom would do a little ritual, and just like that, Tsubaki would come to meet her? I have a feeling that it could be some sort of code. Let's get a little closer before coming to any conclusions. Good idea! Bushes on the rocks in here. Could that be anything? Another notebook. Could it be Tsubaki's notebook? Let's step back outside now. The atmosphere here is different than I'd imagined. Somehow, it makes me a little reluctant to open the notebook. Hyman knows what you mean. Reading in low light is really bad for your eyes. <sighs> Come on, let's get back outside. <laughs> Here we'll do just fine. Alright, let's see what the notebook says. Oh, ooh, Paimon bets it's all about mysterious treasure! Ah, so exciting! What is it? Uh, why are you whispering all of a sudden? You're making Paimon nervous. You want to let Ayaka read the notebook without distraction. Seems whatever's written in there must be pretty major after all. But, um, based on her expression, probably not a treasure map. Hmm, what could it be? <sighs> Traveler, Paimon, sorry to keep you waiting so long. No worries. It wasn't long at all. You're a very fast reader. Yes, I have. I think I have to share the truth of this notebook with you both. Even though the contents are completely different than what I was expecting. Different how? You mean it wasn't a fox envoy who wrote this? Not a fox envoy, no. It turns out that Tsubaki's real identity is my mother herself. Huh? Surprised? Me too. But that's what it says at the very beginning of the notebook. <clears throat> Tsubaki and I are the same person, and yet we are different. When I become Tsubaki, I stop being Kami Sato Kayo and become the most ordinary woman in the world. What follows in these pages is the ordinary, everyday life of a regular person. Nothing more, nothing less. This notebook is, for the most part, a collection of my mother's musings, both private and trivial. All of the things we thought were about Tsubaki were in fact about my mother herself. So that means that the kimono design and the international dishes... Are things that my mother wished to try, yes. I'm sure this all sounds utterly bizarre to you. But to me at least, my mother's behavior is completely understandable. Or to put it another way, I... I actually have another side to myself as well. I was at a loss for words when I started reading the contents of the notebook. It almost felt like... Like someone had looked inside my mind, examined my thoughts, and then written them all down on paper. 
Ryoka. From the moment my mother married my father, she became the mother of the Kamisato household. And with that came all sorts of duties. At the same time, the prestige of the Yashiro Commission brought its own share of responsibility. On top of that, every action she ever took was seen as representing the Kamisato clan. People were always watching her. Under such circumstances, she never had much time to do the things she really wanted to do. After my father passed away, Ayato and I took over responsibility for the affairs of the clan. We ran into all sorts of difficulties during that time. I'm not sure if people outside the clan could ever imagine what it was like. Every time I found myself up against a difficult issue, I'd ask myself, did my mother go through this too? What would she have done in this situation? Maybe it's because it had been so long since I last saw her, but... Somehow, all that was left of her in my mind was the sight of her that inspired awe and commanded respect. But my image of her was incorrect. When I read this notebook, I realized she was just like me. Underneath whatever position she may have held, she was just an ordinary person. She liked pretty kimonos. She wanted to try food from different places. She yearned to see sights she'd never seen before. Maybe this all sounds immature to you, but I feel just the same way. I want to live life not as Kamisato Ayaka, but as an ordinary woman. Mother wrote that she'd always wanted to go to a local Inazuman festival. She said that sometimes, on a clear night, if you looked out from our house, you could see lights off in the distance. I've seen those lights too. It looks so lively with so many people. And it's so brightly lit it makes the whole sky glow. Of course, sometimes it does make me a bit anxious from a public order perspective. But for someone of my position to just show up at a festival with no warning, it could be considered improper etiquette. Especially in my parents' generation, when the Yashiro Commission didn't have a particularly close relationship with the populace. Even if no one stopped us, the idea of the Yashiro Commission going out into the crowd, it'd certainly draw some strange looks. People would probably start thinking there was trouble afoot. Mother said that she didn't want to put people on edge. She wanted everyone to enjoy the fun and freedom of the festival. She didn't want to disturb them, and didn't have much free time anyway, so she never went. Not even once. Ah, so the kimono design... That must have been the outfit she planned on wearing if she ever did go to a festival, right? That's right. And sometimes, festivals sell international food. She wanted to try that, too. I hope this isn't a disrespectful thing to say, but I never knew my mother was so in touch with her inner child. <laughs> well, that's not disrespectful at all. Paimon thinks your mom was the best of both. A big softie on the inside and a big sense of responsibility on the outside. Hmm. Without knowing it, I've ended up fulfilling several of my mother's wishes already. But going to a festival is the one thing that I cannot do for her. Perhaps this is one thing that can simply never be. I understand. Thank you. I think I realize something now. Mother and I are so similar in so many ways. The things she faced are things that I too will go on to face. She chose to place her unfulfilled wishes onto the identity of Tsubaki. As for me, I've already decided. Oh, so you decided on an alter ego too? No, um, I don't plan to do anything like that. I think... I think I will set myself a new goal. To live each day without regrets. So, um, traveler, I... <clears throat> <sighs> Deep breaths, Ayaka. Deep breaths. <sighs> Would you be at all interested in checking out an Inazuman festival? Paimon's been dying to go ever since we saw that poster. Paimon would love to go with you, Ayaka. Hey, come on, don't make fun. It's just because I used to have the same concerns my mother did. But now, I don't think I need to worry about it so much. I'm going to be true to myself and fulfill the wish that my mother and I shared. 
I know that you of all people can understand me going my own way on this. So, let's do this, you and me. Let's go to a festival together. Paimon wants to come! Festivals here have loads of tasty snacks too, right? Oh, and fun and games! Great. Thanks, you guys. If we head over now, we should still make it in time. Oh, good point! Today is the last day, right? What are we waiting for? Let's 